welcome to Autodesk Inventor Chapter 1. We are now starting the Inventor program. We are done with AutoCAD and we are now into Inventor. So let us look at what the objectives for today's video are going to be. We will develop, uh, com we will talk about the development of computer geometric modeling. We will talk about feature based parametric modeling. We'll talk about startup options and unit setup. Autodesk Inventor screen layout. User interface and mount but mount mouse buttons and online help. So let's get right into it. So, what well, the development of computer generated modeling is a relatively new technology. Um, came about in around the 1950s is when it started. So the first the first generation CAD programs were developed in the 1950s. So new, you know, not really, but it's it's not been around forever. You know, everything was hand drafted back in the day. But the first generation CAD programs came out around 1950. So the first generation CAD programs were simply 2D computer programs. So simply, simply to say, they were just two dimensional, sort of like, I mean, sort of like a, an, electro an electronic equivalent of the drafting boards or drafting tables that draftsmen used to use back in the day. The 2D software, which you've just done with AutoCAD, is kind of what that was. The development of three dimensional modeling schemes. Well, they started with three-dimensional wireframes. Now, a wireframe is like exactly what it sounds like, the frame of whatever you're drawing. So 3D modeling began with wireframing. Wireframing is different than actually solid modeling. It is just the frame, like it says. Wireframing is just the frame. We'll look at that later in this class. Um, but yeah, it started with wireframing. That's where 3D modeling uh, got its beginning. So there are two predominantly used methods for representing solid modeling. And they are constructive solid geometry and boundary representation. So constructed solid geometry, or CSG, can be defined as the combination of 3D solid primitives. So what constitutes a primitive? Well, that kind of varies somewhat on the software. If we're going to be using Inventor in this class. If you continue in the engineering program, you're going to wind up using uh, something else, which is called SolidWorks. So it includes a rectangular prism, a cylinder, a cone, a wedge, and a sphere. That is what CSG or computer, gener or computer solid geometry has. And now in BREP, which is boundary representation method, objects are represented in terms of their spatial boundaries. So that's more defined by points, edges, and surfaces of a volume and or issues commands that sweep or rotate a defined face into a third dimension. So that is what it is used for that. So what we're gonna talk about is feature-based parametric modeling. Parametric modeling is what this is actually called. Parametric modeling, the name of the book is Parametric Modeling. So parametric modeling offers many benefits. Number one, uh, we begin with simple conceptual models with minimal detail. This approach conforms to the design philosophy of shape before size. So you make the shape before you worry about the size of that shape. Uh, geometric constraints, dimensional constraints, and relational parametric equations can be used to capture design intent. The ability to update an entire system, including parks, assemblies of drawing after changing one parameter of complex design. So basically, you can change one current parameter and it'll change everything that you have in that uh, in that thing and it'll make it way easier instead of you having to go through and change everything individually. And then we can quickly export and evaluate different design variations. Existing data can be reused to create new designs and it also has very quick turnaround, you know, Hand drafting took a long time. This has much quicker turnaround. So let's actually look at Inventor itself. You can see it on my screen here. On a desk Inventor, to open it, you would go right here, find this eye on your computer that says Autodesk Inventor. And once you find that, you would double click on it, and then this will pop up. So this is the Get Started screen. On the Get Started screen, you see all kind of cool stuff, including this right here I want to point out, Tutorial Gallery. If you get stuck or lost, they have tons of great tutorials, and of course, so does YouTube, but they have tons of great tutorials you can watch and learn about uh, Autodesk Inventor. So I wanted you guys to be aware that Tutorial Gallery is very, very, very useful for you if you get stuck or lost during this process. So in order to start a new drawing, let's talk about new file dialog box and unit setup. So here's the new file dialog box. Right here, you can do a new part, a new assembly, a new drawing, or a new presentation. You guys know .dbwg, that was AutoCAD, so a drawing is 2D. 
A new part would be 3D and assembly would be putting a bunch of parts together. And in a presentation we'll talk about later, it's actually making like a little movie of, or, or a little uh, exploded view of what you have drawn. So we're going to click part today. We're going to look at new parts, see how that works. It's going to bring it up. That's one way to do it. But another way to do it where you get more options is to say new. And then this box comes up. This is the box I want you to see. We want standard inch, not standard metal, not sheet metal, but standard inch. And we want it to be English, not metric. So we have all that together. So we say create, and then your drawing is created. So this is your default inventor window. When you first open it, this is what it will look like. So let's talk about some of these menus and then we'll go into them in a little bit more detail. This here is called the file menu. You click on it and this is your file menu. So it's got all of your stuff, new, open, save, save as, export, print, all that is in your file menu. This up here is your quick access toolbar. It's got things like save, open, new, home, um, materials and then type of materials, colors. It's got all kinds of stuff up here. That is your quick access toolbar. And this, let's close this, this here, this here is your ribbon toolbar. So ribbon, depending on what you're on, it's a different 3D model, sketch, annotate, inspect. This is your ribbon toolbar. And again, this little button here changes the view of it. So if you accidentally hit it, if you keep hitting it, it'll go back to your normal view right there. So that is your ribbon toolbar. Your feature toolbar paddle is right, let's see here telling you what this is like this is create so that's what that feature is this feature helps you create this feature helps you modify this feature helps you explore work features patterns so on and so forth this is your model browser everything you draw will show up in here so if i start a 2d sketch and let's say i just draw a rectangle now you see i have sketch one over here so if i finish this sketch and i click on this and i delete sketch one that rectangle also goes away because that was drawn on sketch one. No more sketch one means no more rectangle. This is your graphics window. This is where everything is going to happen right here. And then this is your 3D indicator. It tells you where you're turned. So you can turn to the front. You can turn to the top. You can turn to the right. And you see that this is moving as I do that. So there you can kind of see all three axes, X, Y, and Z. So that's a quick jump through on this okay so we look at the file menu we already talked about that so the file menu is where you do everything you can print to pdf which is how we'll do it so print print set up all that and then you'll print to pdf like we did in the other one your quick access toolbar again if you want to open a new one you can click on this it brings up this window again that we already talked about earlier in the video uh your ribbon and tab tool panel if you want to say i did that again see i draw a square and then I want to extrude that square. I can go up to the 3D model extrude, decide how far to extrude it, click OK. And now I have a little cube there instead of a square. Uh, your online help panel is right here. This little question mark over here is your online help. So if you click on that, it gives you lots of options for things to help you on. All right, then you have your 3D model toolbar, which we've kind of talked about, extrude, revolve, sweep, loft, coil. We'll talk about all this as we go through the program. And then your graphics window, that is where your graphics show up. So you see right there is my graphics window. That's where my graphics shows up. And you'll notice now under origin, I have this extrusion and that sketch is under the extrusion. So if I delete that sketch, then the extrusion also goes away. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me delete it. I have to delete the extrusion. So if I delete the extrusion, it says consume sketch and features, which means everything goes away. All right, let's talk about mouse buttons. You guys know what a mouse is. So your left mouse button, the regular mouse button that you click for everything, is used for most operations, such as selecting menus, icons, picking graphic entities. One click of the button is used to select an icon, menus, forms, entities, and pick graphics items. Your right mouse button is used to bring up additional available options. So if I click right, here's a bunch of available options by clicking right. Um, the software also utilizes the right mouse click button as same as enter. So enter, enter just like that instead of clicking enter on your keyboard. The wheel, let's draw something again real quick here. Let's do a circle this time. The wheel zooms in and out. 
So I'm using the wheel to do that. Also, you can click with the wheel and you can pan around if you hold it down. So that's what kind of what quickly what the mouse buttons do in this. And then escape, your escape key on your keyboard is the cancel. It cancels all commands. Uh, once you use escape, it'll cancel any command you're in. And I always hit it two or three times just to make sure that I have it safe. Let me finish the sketch here. So you can see I can zoom in and out. I can pan it around. I can use it, click here and turn it with my left mouse button or just click on one of these to turn it. Click on this so you can see that angle. Turn it that way, extrude it, and this is all stuff you can do. And then zoom out so you can see it better. Now I have a little, uh, I don't know what that would be, a little cylinder. All right. So there are two types of management systems, single user project and Autodesk Vault project. You will not use the Autodesk Vault project because we don't have access to it because we have the education edition of Autodesk Inventor. But just know that they're called single user project and Autodesk Vault project. So that if you want a project to set up a new inventor project, you'll go to the single user project. So click new. Give me just a moment here. So the inventor, yeah, the inventor project wizard will walk you through that and we'll talk about that a little later. I don't want to go through the whole thing right now. But we can create a project, which we'll probably do for some of this stuff, but we're not too worried about creating projects in here. So that's something that we will talk about later. Uh, and then leaving Autodesk Inventor, if you go into the file menu, exit Autodesk Inventor Professional, I'm not going to save changes. It closes and you're done with it. So that is a very quick synopsis of Chapter 1, Autodesk Inventor. All right, we will see you guys in the next video.